G'day everyone and welcome to episode 270 of the Aussie Gamers Experience podcast. In the show this week, potty seat number five, Modern Warfare, a note from the past, JB lays the boot, Gamescom, will Uncharted ever be found, printing or ute hire, Giz Inc, Minecraft, Game Pass, and of course much, much more. Editing Lucas, play the track. This is the Aussie Gamers Experience Podcast, the show with barking dogs in the background, sneezing, coughing, and all of those nice little things that remind you that this is not a paid production. Oh, and in between all of that, there's some video game stuff too. Enjoy the show. Thank you for tuning in for the show this week. Today is Monday, the 26th of August, 2019. I'm your host, Snoogs, and joining me for hosting duties, as always, is the one and only Greggio. How are you, bro? I am one, I am only, and I'm good. That's good. <laughs> also bringing the sultry sounds of his own little voice is Lucas. G'day, mate. G'day, guys. Thanks for having me again. What's the go with the... Everybody's been... Well, not everybody, but I've had a, a couple of people make comments about my voice. What, what is it with my voice that's apparently soothing, they say, so they say? It's not, it's not so much that the voice is soothing, it's that you've got a face for radio. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, well... <laughs> what are friends for, eh? When, when I'm listening to you on the podcast, your face is very soothing. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you, you've you've got a, a voice that's um, it lends itself well to recording. It's got a good register. Yeah, that's really. I think I don't. I don't think it's. I think it's the register. That's the register that's soothing. I I don't know what that means, but thank you. It's 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 because you got a very low tonal voice when you, yes. when when it's recorded back. It's quite low and s- slow and not slow as in you just that right pace and yeah look it's the register it's all about yeah. the register that may have something to do with my audio settings <laughs> my, <laughs> you gotta cheating to barry white <laughs> yeah i've been cheat, <laughs> cheating a little bit because uh, if i do this hang on if i go like this g'day guys how are you <laughs> has that changed it oh god yeah, yeah. Well, what about now yeah. what about now is that good yeah, I'm, I'm starting to get dicky <laughs> knee vibes. <laughs> and what about now? How's that sound? Yeah, just um, just step a bit closer to it, will you? Sound like you're at the back of the room. What, like that? Yeah. <laughs> what are you? Hello, how are you? No, I'll just leave it at my normal setting. There we go. Um, I mean, no, it's my voice, so i got a fantastic voice. I was going to say, you yeah. popped that bubble. <laughs> We tried. We tried to give you the points, but you popped it. Fine. <laughs> Editing, Lucas. Remove the last thirty seconds. <laughs> the, the Twitterverse is exploding right now. No. No, no one cares. It's, it's no one cares. Like three people have mentioned it. It's not like the world. All good. No, take take the compliment. Take it as the world. The world over Thank is you. talking about the sultry, sultry tones of Lucas. All righty. Um, bit of fun to be had this week. I've got a This Week in Gaming, but it's a little bit different. So This Week in Gaming, we're talking about 2019. And we're talking about the week that is... (laughs) Way to go back in time. Yeah, well, I'm going back, you know, four days. Uh, We're talking about Gamescom because it's just finished up. And I thought I'd run through a quick quick couple of things. And, you know, I'd like you guys to to jump in and and join in in with it all. So... uh, Two main things that stood out for me was the um, P standing. I mean, Death Stranding. What? That was that was probably the good one. Did you not see that part of the Death Stranding? T- no, trailer? I've been busy. I've been working. I've been out of commission for the last week. <laughs> okay, you you can pee in in Death Stranding. Why? Why not? I think it's more the appropriate question with that game because out, out of everything that makes sense in Death Stranding. Peeing kind of just fits in because nothing else yeah, well, makes sense. Nothing makes sense here. Yeah, that's right. So I suppose no. <laughs> what, why start now, Kojima? Yeah. Uh, well, so, there's one thing we can glean from that is we'll never get yeah. to play that in Australia now. 
<laughs> this is this is how great the internet is. The internet is such a great place. If you haven't been there, try it. It's great fun. The first thing that Hideo had to come out and say after the trailer dropped was, no, we have not rendered <laughs> Norman's penis. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's really good. If you can pee in the new PlayStation exclusive game, then maybe the PlayStation 5 might come in handy. <laughs> but we'll uh, get to that. We'll get to those renders very shortly. Uh, the other thing for me that I, that I found the pop-up that was really quite cool, Little Nightmares 2. Yes, I did it see come, that pop-up. Yeah, I saw the trailer. Out of nowhere, and I watched the trailer and went, yep, sign me up done that's awesome and it comes sort of out of nowhere i didn't even know it was in the in the process of things no neither did i any others you've heard of or i've got a i've got a full list of everything that was shown but is there, is there anything in particular that you've heard of or you are aching for oh, look i don't know if it was gamescom related but uh i remember hearing something about sony or yeah, Sony PlayStation purchasing Insomniac Games. That was yes, recent, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that so, was during the uh, during the Gamescom conference. That was kind of Sony's big reveal. Yeah, okay, it was that okay, Insomniac's yeah. coming on board as a as a Sony studio. Yeah, so that's that's good. I mean, good that's for good. Them. That's that's great. A lot of talent there as well, and they've they've pretty much just done Sony exclusive now for a while. So <clears throat> it's just official yeah. now, isn't it? Yeah, it's just kind it's of on official. The yeah, kind of like well, playground games and Xbox. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anything stand out for you, Gretch? Dude, I'm a bit like Luke in this regard. I Gamescom has really passed me by this year. Mm. Oh, yeah, I've missed a lot of it, um, mainly because work and just having life outside of gaming uh, has become a little bit hectic at the moment. But and look, it's just it, it has. It's just passed me by. So. Outside of what I'm already waiting for this year, which is, you know, imminent anyway, um, I, I wasn't really expecting anything anyway, short of what I'm already waiting for. So, no, fair enough. Well, Gamescom kind of has, uh, it's it's flown under the radar, and there's probably a a good reason for that. And one of these things that comes from a uh, a comment that I that I found that was written in a Japanese magazine. So it's from a particular Sony executive. I don't have the name who it was. You wouldn't they've be suggest- able to say it anyway. Very much so. Um, <laughs> they've, they've suggested that 2019 would be a year in which the PlayStation crouches so it can leap higher next year. That's so Japanese. It, it very <laughs> much is, is very much so. Then goes on to say, you know, the whole industry is doing the same thing right now. And Gamescom is pretty much just an extension of what E3 was earlier. Uh, mm. Good things are coming because at the moment it's too quiet for them not to be. <laughs> which is which is kind of you know we're we're in that bit of the holding pattern. No one's released a whole heap of information around next next generation consoles, uh, things like that. There's there's obviously leaks and um, a lot of technical aspects, but we don't know you know anything really a hundred percent, especially visually. But um, we've had some leaks around that. Uh, a few of the other things from Gamescom was the world premiere for Erica, which is a new PlayStation game. Um, I likened it to a full motion video game. So, like, think back to the 90s, the FMV type stuff. Uh, it's all real actors and like a choose your own adventure type thing. But uh, I haven't gotten to playing that just yet. Uh, some other stuff. There was some stuff on Destiny 2, which I think Shadow Keep is is the next sort of download for that. Yeah. Uh, Darksiders, Disintegration, FIFA 20, Everspace, Borderlands, some more information uh, with some Borderlands gameplay coming out. Uh, something called Humankind, which just looks about as twisted as twisted can be. Uh, details for The Witcher on the Switch. Oh, yeah. I don't know how I feel about that yet. Why would you have an opinion on it? I I really enjoyed The the Witcher, and I enjoyed how it looked and how it felt and how it played. I just think I I don't think the Switch has enough grunt to portray what the game is. But why does that matter? Yeah, look, 
It's not. It's not aimed at you yeah. as the target audience. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. But I'm not- You'll play it on your PS4. But mm-hmm. what if if there's a, a game? It does the performance of that game make it? No. The, like, visuals, it, it, the visuals help it. Yeah, but d- does the visuals make the game? And if the answer is no. yes, that's a piece of shit anyway. No, they do not. But they do. Then, they do help it. It was just. It was a game that you know take all the. The other pieces away, the gameplay was excellent. The story was phenomenal, but it was also visually quite exceptional. And I just think the downgrade, but like you said, it's not aimed at me, so it doesn't really matter. No, yeah, it doesn't matter at all. That's right. No. If it no. was, if say they, for, for example, they said, oh, all right, well, we're going to remove all the, the online DLC from every other platform and now it's only available on the switch okay yeah all right your opinion would would uh, definitely make sense but uh, to not be or to be sort of against the yeah. idea of it going to the switch is kind of like just being spiteful i would say i'm not against it i just don't know how i think about it i don't know how i feel about it going but it doesn't <laughs> matter because i wouldn't buy it anyway because i've already <laughs> got it so it's pointless so discussing it really up. Yeah, editing Lucas. Just get rid of that last two minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, was, I, was, uh, I can I can speak for editing Lucas, and he says, "Eat a dick." <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> got some more gameplay for uh, Predator Hunting Grounds. Mm-hmm. If you ever want to have a look at that, Lucas, you might be able to tell me about this. What What is this ray tracing business? Have you got like a, a thirty second explanation? Uh, yeah. It's yeah. well, look, ray, ray tracing is basically the concept of bouncing light in, in a in a three D environment. That's as simple as it can be. So it's good for okay. reflections uh, off, say, uh, glass, chrome, water, anything shiny. Yep. In using ray tracing, makes it look absolutely realistic and fantastic. Okay, thank you because that that's a good because I it doesn't mean a whole lot to me, but uh, there's. <laughs> Not just the the remake of Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Uh, mm-hmm. There was a whole lot of information released about the RTX, G- GeForce RTX ray tracing, you know, the turn it yep. on business. And there was yep. some information shown about that. And you know what? It looks fantastic. Uh, you can com- you can really see the difference. So it's just I, I like the explanation of it. Um, the 2v2 gameplay, which we'll get into, and then it just... The list just keeps on going. It was a massive week of just information, really. But a lot of it's information that we already know. There were, I don't think there was really anything new. Uh, yeah. Not really. No, I'll just so I'm just I'm just you know having a bit more of a, a scroll down. There's there's lots of stuff you know, Watchdog and and stuff that's coming to the state um, Stadia. Uh, some more Doom. Some more Grid. Some more super hot Mortal Kombat. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Apparently, Minecraft Dungeons was playable. Ooh, that so that's pretty cool. cool. Yeah. Yes. Yes. There's plenty of stuff. Um, it was a big thing for, for Xbox as well, which um, was just a uh, what do they call those? What do they call those things, Luke? The Xbox. <laughs> what? Um, I don't know what you're talking about. The the. Things where they come and talk about that, you know, they do it every couple of months. Oh, uh, no, I can't remember. I don't know. I know yeah, what you're talking I'm about right. now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is uh, it now? It's going to bug me. Inside Xbox. Inside Xbox. Yeah, there you go. Glad I thought That's of it. Yeah, thank you for that. You just jogged the memory. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's all that sort of stuff. And uh, that leads me into my next question. What sort of stuff do you think we're going to see at PAX in Australia? Because I'm going to PAX. Woo! I reckon we're probably going to see a lot of what you just mentioned. Yeah, you know, the, the funny thing is I'm actually more excited. There's a there's a whole section of PAX, which I, because I've obviously been, <laughs> now that I'm, I'm definitely heading, I'm all booked, everything's ready to go. Um, I've been actually seeing what's there because, you know, I've never been to one before. And there's a very big homegrown section, apparently, which uh, is just, you know, the people, the the Aussie studios, uh, Aussie game creators and all that sort of stuff that are making the games locally. 
And that's the bit that I'm actually really looking forward to, going and touching base with all these local studios. Uh, from what other people have told me, it's a very, very quiet area. There's not a lot of not a lot of traffic through there, uh, just because mm-hmm. it's you know indie type stuff, and it's not the big name that a lot of people want to go and see. But for me, that's that's where I'm sort of pointed. That's the bit that I'm looking forward to. Yeah, nice. Go and see what the Aussies are putting together. Uh, Victoria and South Australia already do a lot of really good stuff, and they've also got uh, funding put aside for local game development. I just wish the rest of the country would uh, start to to kick in a bit more as well and get it started. But that's it. All right. Well, let's jump into the meats and bones of the episode. And we'll start off with uh, Greggio's window shopping for this week, Nights and Bikes. Nights and Bikes. All right. So this little gem is coming out on the 27th of August. It's on PS4. And I believe it's also on PC, so you can get it on Steam. Uh, it's a co-op action adventure. Uh, it's actually uh-huh. based on a book written by Gabriel Kent. So it's a coming of age story kind of thing where these two kids called Nessa and Demelza, uh, ride their bikes along the coast of a fictitious British Isle in the 1980s. And they're looking for a legendary treasure esque kind of Goonies kind of feel to it. It's created by a company called Foam Sword and it's being pre- published by Double Fine. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, his, his ears switched on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, it's got an interesting sort of paper craft, hand-painted art style kind of thing going on. Kind of think like Little Big Planet kind of style, but the actual play is like that... You, sort of 40, 45 degree top down sort of map anyway so yeah by the time that you're listening to this you should be able to look it up and um but look it's like i said it looks very cute it looks looks like it can be some fun all right lucas you yeah, mate you're gonna start us off mate you bought yourself a toy i did yes can i talk about my 3d printer again you can, you can. I thought, oh. you know, I, I can, I can sense you sitting there, maybe wanting to, you know, let a couple of people know about it. As far as I can't hear well, it in the background. Well, no, <laughs> I'm, I'm having a little, like, I've got a little bit of a tick going, like, I'm like, because I had to make sure I actually timed it so the most recent print finished about 15 minutes before we started the podcast. That's, <laughs> because this this thing has been working around the clock. I haven't stopped printing shit. I've just got shit everywhere in my office. There's there's red filament everywhere. There's offcuts everywhere. There's print uh, rafts everywhere. It's I haven't stopped. It's I'm addicted. That it is an addictive big. thing. Uh, mm. This is the best thing that I've bought in years. I've, I absolutely <laughs> love it. I'm uh, designing my own things as well as downloading things to, to print off. Uh, it, it is really addictive. And uh, well, I, I've got it. I, sorry, go. <clears throat> I was going to say, I don't know whether to um, – I, I can't remember where you put it, I should say, but you said that uh, owning a 3D printer is kind of like owning a ute. Yes. <laughs> I feel I feel pretty bad because when you put the first thing you put up on on Twitter was you know that you've got yourself a three D printer and first person to write back to me going I want a battery you yeah. know if you, if you need ideas and I'm like oh oh okay um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, I I I quickly worked out now I know what Ute owners feel like when they've got a Ute and people want to move house. Oh, yep. hey, you've got a ute, haven't you? Oh, hey, you've got a 3D printer, haven't you? Oh, do you want to make one of these? Can you make one of these? I'm like, yes, I can make one of these. I can make all of those things. Will I? Well, maybe. Yeah, that's another question. <laughs> uh, but I've got another story. Now, if you've heard, uh, if you listened to the last or the latest episode of uh, that other show, I told a story about the, the incident involved in, in getting the 3D printer. Well, the saga continues with that same retail store. Uh, I went and purchased, well, I bought the, the, the 3D printer f- online from Amazon because the prices were too exorbitant uh, in the uh, the retail store. 
And I thought, well, but what I'll do is I'll go and buy the filament from the retail store, uh, which is basically the ink for the 3D printer, the, the looks like whippersnipper cord. Anyway, so yep. I, I went in there, I went up to where the filament was on the shelf and I'm having a look at it and I thought, you know what, I'm going to jump online, I'm going to check it and make sure this is the right one, right, because I don't want to get the wrong shit because I'm new to all this, I'm not, I'm not, you know, too confident and this is the first time I'm buying the filament. As I'm searching online, I'm on my phone just searching it up, uh, one of the uh, employees come up to me and say, can I help you at all? I said, yeah, I'm looking for some uh, some 3D printer filament. I pointed at my printer because the printer I have is on the shelf right there. I said, I'm just that's my that's the same printer I've got. I'm just looking for some filament. I'm just online at the moment checking to make sure this is the right one. <clears throat> and the employee says to me, Yep, yeah, that's the right one. And I said, Oh, are you sure? And the response was, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I said, All right, well, I'll take these three. And important to note that they were on special. They were about $8 off per reel, which I thought was really good. So I bought three reels. Anyway, the, the original uh, filament that, that came with the printer ran out. So I went to go and put in a new one and it didn't fit. Right. Are you serious? I was checking it. I should have just stuck with my guns and checked it myself because the idiot working there had no bloody clue. So anyway, the following day, there I am, I scrounge around, look through the bin, find the receipt, <clears throat> go back in there with the filament, go and speak to the guy at the counter. I said, mate, I need to exchange these. I, and I told him the story. I said, so I want to get the one that does fit my printer. And he goes, yep, no worries, go grab them. And I noticed that the price had gone back up to full price. Can you see where I'm going with this? Mm-hmm. So I went back to the counter and I said, look, just before you put it all through, can I just confirm, can I get the price, the the special price that was there last week when I bought them, considering had I been allowed to do my own research, wasn't interrupted and reassured that it was the right one, I would have bought the right one for the cheaper price. And you just guess, go, you guess what the answer was. It would have started with a, uh... Yes, that's correct. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 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 Let me get my manager. I don't think so. (laughs) Yeah, well, the answer was no. And I said, all right, look, let's just... I'm going to put this quite simply, okay? This isn't my fault. This This is an error from the store. And I'm going to give you... Uh, that's right, and I, I argued the point a little bit, and he said, look, I'll make a phone call and see if I can get it overridden. And I said, no, 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 no phone call. I don't have much time because I popped in before I was going to work. So I don't have time because the last time he went uh, from when I was buying the printer, he did a phone call to see if he could do a better price. It took like 15 minutes, and he came back with the same stupid air. Anyway, I won't go into that. I've done that on that other show. Go check it out. So anyway, I said, no, no phone call. I don't have time. I said, you, this is, you, you got two choices. You either put it through and I, you charge me the extra money. I'll take it. I'll pay it. And I walk out and I'll never come back to this store ever again. The second one is you grow some balls, pump up, make an executive decision, take it on board that there was a mistake made by the store and give me the discounted price. Now, I'm not going to force you to do either one. If you're going to make me pay the extra, I'll pay the extra and I'll be on my way and it'll be the last time I ever see you, see you again. So he's looking at me and he's like sweating. He's like, because I'm... <laughs> <laughs> this, like, yeah. he's poor, this poor nerdy guy, you know, and I'm sort of like, a, a, you know, compared to him, I'm a bit of a big dude and beard and angry looking face because I was fucking angry. And, um, yeah, so he's, he's like, you know, beating and shaking and quivering. And after beforehand telling me that he didn't have access to changing the price, he then changed the price. price. It was magical. It was almost like I gave him the ability to hack his own system and give me the freaking discount. Because I, I was serious. I was going to pay. I was going to pay because it was at that point it was not about the money. 
It was about the principle of the fact that it wasn't my error. It, it was taken out of my hands and I was reassured by staff. So anyway, long story short, uh, they, he put it through. The, the, the ones that I bought originally were too big. I got the smaller ones. For the same price, I managed to get uh, an extra one. So I had four of the smaller ones and they refunded me $6. That was outstanding. Uh, and uh, I left and contrary to kind of what I said, I'm not going back there ever again anyway. That, that place is, yeah, there's no one's, no one's got pump there. So anyway, that was that story. Was that fun? Oh, that, that's, that's fun. Yeah. But, um, but anyway, tell us what you've been the, printing. Yeah. The actual printer itself is fun <laughs> and it was totally worth all that bullshit. Uh, so uh, I've shown off on, on my Twitter that I've printed a bust of Batman and uh, that was mm-hmm. one of my first detailed prints and that's come out spectacular. I painted it today. I haven't finished painting it, but it, it looks quite good. So I did that. Uh, I also, Pat, I printed you a bloody Batarang that's, that's here waiting I for know. you. Awesome. <laughs> so the Batarang is there. Uh, but uh, I've got a bigger Sonic the Hedgehog, which I haven't unveiled, and I'm going to paint that, and that's going to be part of a 3D printing video that I'm going to do because everybody on Twitter wants me to make a video on it, So, uh, which yeah, I'm more than happy to oblige because it's good fun. So that's that one. I've undercoated that one but haven't painted it. I also have printed a, you know, the in Doom, the, the little Doom guy, little um, collectibles that you can find? Yep. Yeah, I printed a little one of them. Nice. But uh, nice. it's... Uh, I, that one was in two halves, and I've glued it together, but it, just, it doesn't look right. That seam is just way too massive. So I might have to do a take two on that one and put it together as one piece and just give it some supports so it prints properly. But I've got that one. that's That's got the primer on it, but not painted. I also painted this cool iris-looking thing. And if you check out on my YouTube, not YouTube, Twitter, uh, there's one of my daily g'days there with um, a video showing this iris container i don't know if i don't think you guys have seen it because it literally went up before the show but uh, it prints in one piece so this that's not like sorry not one piece but it prints in one go and no assembly required and it's a little container which you twist it and think of like a, a camera iris uh, or mm. is iris the word i want i don't yeah kind of it's got multiple pieces and it prints in place Correct. It's exactly yep. that's exactly what they call it. Prints in yep. place. Yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah, you just got to trim off a little bit of the um, uh, supports, and then it, it it's a fully functional little container. So if, there's that. If you if you want to see something really cool, it's printed in place. So the car manufacturer at Koenigsegg, they make yeah. their own turbos and they three D print them and they print all the components in place, so that they don't need bearings in their turbos. Yeah, right. they what are they print printing them. it with? Oh, they use a metal printer. Metal so, metal compounds, yeah, okay. Yeah. And, yeah, Very the good. tolerances are so fine, they don't need bearings or, or you know, stuff like that. They All the parts fit so perfectly together, they just run. Mm. It's really That's cool. impressive. I, I don't yeah. think I've got the uh, the gear to do that, but this little <laughs> no. custom thing that I've got is, is pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no. I've also printed a, a, a couple of other things for my, my little girl because she's a little bit smitten with the printer as well. So she's got like a, a, a Wonder Woman logo, uh, a Wonder Woman, uh, I guess you call it a tiara. I don't know, whatever it is, the thing that she wears on her head. Um, mm-hmm. I've also printed a little one-up mushroom from Super Mario Brothers. Uh, I've got a, a, a special little gift here for snoogs that i'm going to give him which is uh, uh it's, it's kind of like a little trophy uh, but it's mm-hmm. got a playstation logo on it and the word playstation and uh, i printed that with my new filament so it's printed in blue and uh and a little bit of paint on it to, to make the logo and the words pop so the, i'm sure there'll be photos of that uh, going up eventually but i'll give it you snoogs first and allow you to yeah. do that Yep. Um, and, and I will. I, I'm printing video game stuff left, right, and center. It's so cool. I've got so many ideas. 
because while it prints, because some of these prints, like the Sonic the Hedgehog is the longest one so far, which took 15 hours. So in that time, I'm looking at more things and putting them into a, downloading them, putting them into a folder ready to print whenever I've got the time. And uh, I've also designed age coins. I've seen these. Like, Ding. Yeah, the little coins. Like I've, I've been working on them, printing them sort of as concepts and tweaking. And, uh, yeah, they're basically age XP coins, which uh, the idea is I'm going to print a whole bunch of them up. And uh, for, like, super-duper awesome age community members, they're going to get one in the post. It's not, it's just a little trinket. It's nothing major. But it's just something really neat. I've also uh, started creating an age XP trophy, which is actually quite large. And uh, I, I don't know what it's going to be for yet, but we're going to do some form of like um, a competitive uh, game or something like that. And the winner's going to get a little trophy, you know, stuff like that. I Ooh, just I like that. Yep. Been, been going mad with it. And I absolutely love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a new toy you've got to. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, it's not wearing off, even though really you just press the button and walk away and you come back the next day and there's something cool inside. It's like magic. Yeah, but it's I think it's it's one of those things that's very much suited to you and your personality traits. You know, that that techie side of it that once I think once you start getting more into like the design side of it. And and really start playing with it. The the shit that you're going to come up with, it's going to blow people away. I reckon. Well, just, yeah, it, just, it, just because you know, there's it's, there's an infinite possibilities that you can do with a three D printer. Yeah, and if and, anybody knows me, if I get something like this, I don't just get it and use it. I will learn everything about it and get, out, yeah. I'll get everything out of it that I can to the point where I'll probably have to upgrade and get a bigger and better one. Yeah. This is yeah. uh, it's a good good starting point. I love it. And it puts a lot better quality than I was ever expecting. It's really I'll good. Come, I'll come over. You'll open the car and the bike will be out the front on the lawn. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're in your the garage. Go. Oh, come yeah. have a look. <laughs> <laughs> I've 3D printed a new bike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one's worth nothing now. Look at this one. <laughs> look at this one. Look what I've got here. Look at all the fairings on this. It's all printed in place and away you go. I've even started thinking about accessories to 3D print for my bike as well. I just, it's, it's get out of the control. You're going to come over here next time and you're going to go to the bathroom and the, there's going to be a fancy toilet roll holder that's 3D printed. The uh, the bottle that you uh. use to squirt the liquid soap on your hands, I'll probably 3D print a new one of those. <laughs> the shower head will be like multicolored and all fancy. <laughs> <laughs> the world is my It's going to have a spoiler on it so it can go faster. Yeah. Oh, I might 3D print myself a new coffee mug. <laughs> I don't know how that'll go. It'll probably leak. Oh, dear. Yeah, mate, I, I love it. That's the that's probably the best money I've spent in a long time. Wow, awesome. Gretch, did you play any of the, uh, the Modern Warfare Alpha over the weekend? No, I didn't, but I interrupted my cousin who was playing it. Does that count? <laughs> that, that works because uh, Lucas played it and so did I. Hmm. So, um, well, what it, from what you saw of it, what do you think? Because you're probably, you know, I, well, I, I don't really know much of you playing first-person shooters. Are you talking so to me? Speak. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, look, <laughs> to be fair, they've, certain, they've, they've like, gone like, out of rotation for me, that's for sure, in the yeah, last, yeah. Like in the a, last Destiny's that years. grindy thing, but like... Oh, uh, Jesus Christ, can you just take turns at talking? For the last eight <laughs> seconds, you've been talking over each other. Still my head in. <laughs> ah, shush. No, I was just going to say, like, apart, like Destiny's got that grindy thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a first person shooter, but it's that, um, the looter shooter thing. But just flat out shooters like Call of Duty or um, Battlefield or stuff like that. I, I haven't really played a lot of it with you. Yeah, look, I, I like them. I like I said they've just fallen out of rotation for me in the last couple of years where mm-hmm. I've wanted to play other things and I've kind of lost interest in. Do you think that might have something to do with the fact that they've been shit? Well, look, the, there, is probably a part, there is probably a part that's that. Like, I'm just... It's, it's first-person shooter fatigue, that's for sure. 
Uh, there was one point where I played every Call of Duty that came out, and you know, I played every you know shooter that reared its ugly head. <clears throat> um, and then you know, um, the last one that I really put any time and effort into was probably um, Wolfenstein: New Order. And when the second one came out, I was even that was wasn't enough to keep me engaged to finish the game. Uh, but Literally, all I saw of this was a menu, like, and the menu looked wonderful. It was just a dude walking <laughs> like he was on patrol <laughs> in the background with words right. written over it, and that looked amazing. When we but, do, you know, when we do the when we do the review, you can do the menu part. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I will, <laughs> I will, I will own that shit because I stared at that menu for quite some time. I missed all of that. You completely dropped out. So uh, it wasn't worth listening to anyway. Doesn't matter. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what did Greg, you think? Greg Greg took about five minutes to tell us he looked at the menu. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Luke, what did what did you yes. think of Modern Warfare at the Alpha? I I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fantastic, actually, and that yep. all that coming from I played one game. <laughs> That's all I had time for because I was working. Oh, okay. I, yeah. Well, I wasn't working when I was play it, playing it. That would be very unprofessional. But I, I had to go to work, so I didn't get much uh, time to play it. But I had a match. Uh, it was 2v2, and I lost, and I still enjoyed it. So if you can lose a game and still have fun, it's uh, it's doing something right. But uh, the, the, the match was a 2v2 in the, I think, probably one of the smallest maps that there will be. And uh, it, it just it felt so much more right that compared to previous Call of Duty games for me. I, I really enjoyed it. Yes. I only played one round, round as well, one match. Mm-hmm. I won five to one. Oh, you and no, <laughs> no, no, it was <laughs> I, I had an exceptionally confident partner. Oh, um, okay. You'll carry. Gotcha. You carried 100%. Uh, but. The concept and the the map that you played on, because I, I watched all um, your video you on YouTube. Video? Yeah. Uh, it was about the same size as the map I played on. Like a campground sort of thing. Uh, mm-hmm. So like a wooded area. And there, I, I found it, I think I put it up in the in the Discord that it was a, 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 pawn, a spawn shooter simulator. Because this particular map, all you had to do, there was... There was one round where uh, we all had rifles with a with a very good scope on it, and yes. these guns were fantastic. And literally, all you had to do was at spawn take two steps, and you could line up the other spawn. And it was just literally two steps, and the first person that got a shot off was the team that won. How uh, many rounds did it take for you to realise get out of the way? <laughs> oh, I I was the one that realised that that's where they were, so I I got the kills. Oh, you were the spawn killer. <laughs> yeah, I, I was the asshole. Um, right, and Didn't so there, there was that. And then once you get your head away from that run and gun mentality of modern warfare, and we yeah. started playing it more tactical, and we're just using the the game chat. It wasn't in a party with anyone. Uh, it was just game chat, and started playing it real tactically uh, between the two of us and um, working out. The, the other team, I'm, I'm guessing, weren't talking or anything like that but because uh, they, they would split up quite a lot where we were staying together and covering each other. And it just it seemed to work really well. And I, I found, found it very enjoyable. Mm. And for, for an alpha, I was blown away with how well it ran. Well, yeah, it, it ran absolutely fine for me. I mean, look, I only yeah. had one game, so I didn't really have much chance to, to play up, but the connectivity was fine. Uh, there was there was no rubber banding, no issues like that. And uh, as you were saying, like I mean, there's 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 very likely it's going to have all your typical game modes in the full release: team deathmatch, uh, free for all, domination, all that sort of stuff. That'll be there, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. I will probably be buying this specifically for two v two. I thought that was fantastic. It'll be even better playing it with a friend and uh, having a good uh, party chat going. Uh, but that's that that really sold me. So it'll be campaign and two v two for me. Love it. I'll come play for some two v two with you because I thought it was brilliant. I really you probably won't. It. You'll probably get it on the PlayStation. This is, he has this a point. Is where, 
This is where we need cross play because it splits friends. He's already left. Yeah, he's already gone. He's gone. Well, he's like, screw you. Fuck this. I'm out of here. He's, I think he's dropped out again. <laughs> what is yeah. going on? <laughs> hey, welcome back, buddy. I don't know, Greg and I are having a nice little chat. Yeah, you're back. <laughs> user, user conversing all right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I did, well, what you missed was me saying, no, nah, I'm not going to, I won't, probably won't be playing it with you because you'll want to get it on the PS4. Yeah. And I'll want to yeah. get it on powerful console. <laughs> powerful console, so PC. So, no, that's not yeah. a console, mate. Well, it stands for powerful console. Get it? That's what a powerhouse. Oh, powerhouse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. Look, we're going to have to have chats about where we're playing this bloody game. Yeah, well, my my PC won't run it. So, well, it will run it. Just won't run it very well. <laughs> so, you may as well just get it on the PS4 then. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> and just, uh, uh, no, it's not. Oh, the right, PS4. Okay. Greg, the only other game I've been playing this week, and the one game you have been playing, is of course Minecraft. It is. It is. First of all, Kaz. You're addicted. Oh, I know you're listening. My, Minecraft is the new Forza. I, I actually, I don't have a great deal to talk about this week. Um, I literally, I played. I did more of what I did last week. And these people that make redstone contraptions use it just insane. I tell you, man, once once you just once you start, it's just it's fun. Yep, engineering degree. That's what you need. Yep. I I just dig and build <laughs> contraptions out of dirt. <laughs> <laughs> I go exploring. Can I get a 3D printer in Minecraft? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you probably you probably come close. There's there's a few weird and wonderful things I've seen floating around. Yeah, actually, I've seen some redstone contraptions that make other stuff. But so yeah, that's get about as close as you can get to a 3D printer. Mm. Well, all, the the only other things I've got game wise this week is more Division Two. I've still just been trolling around in that as you do. And I've gotten really stuck in the Mutant Year Zero. Oh, you're enjoying I'm, that, are you? I, I'm really enjoying it, yeah. Um, so I haven't haven't streamed any because, to be honest, uh, a lot of times last week or over the last few days, it's been by the, by the time I sort of sit down and play, I don't really want to talk. So I've just kind of been on my lonesome, uh, jumping in occasionally, but majority of the time I've either not played or just... Uh, Sat in there just playing away and, and enjoying it. So I haven't done any stream, unfortunately, which sucks because I, I probably should. But, um, yeah, more to come over the next little while, hopefully. All right, well, let's jump into some news. I'm taking the news first off. Where are you taking it? I'm taking it to Melbourne. All right, see ya. On the 5th of, well, on the 5th of September. <laughs> 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 on, the, uh, on the 5th of September in Melbourne. Gears of War Inc. Oh yes. I say, yeah. Oh, yes. I say, yep. Where I say Inc., I of course mean tattooing. Mm-hmm. So Gears Inc. events will pop up for one night only. In the, the fact that an Australian city has been put in with the rest of these: LA, London, Berlin, Paris, Mexico City, and Melbourne. Why they wanted to go to Melbourne? Who knows? Probably because there's lots of you know. Tattooed louts. Tattooed trendsetters down there, I guess. Uh, so between the 4th and the 6th of September, fans in each city are invited to attend or can tune in via uh, live streams and whatnot. So the 5th of September, you will be one of the first to play Gears 5 ahead of its release on the 10th of September. And not only that is Troy Slack, who is... Apparently, one of Australia's best tattoo artists. Unfortunately, I'm not in that world, so I don't know who it is, and I'm a bit slack and haven't checked up on him. But hey, <laughs> hey there we go. Have I been talking to myself? No, no. We no, got we're the, the pun. At, was that intentional? No, it, it wasn't. wasn't. It definitely no. was not. No pun intended. You said no. Troy Slack, and you've been slack, slack, and you haven't done any uh, research. On yeah, it. okay. Uh, coffee swearing off on that one. Anyways, uh, he, will be, he will be tatting, tattooing one lucky fan live at the event. Mm. This so, is becoming uh, a bit of a trend with the whole tattooing. 
Yeah, so apparently there's also offering of smaller permanent and, of course, non-permanent flash sheet tats uh, for anyone who's there. Uh, if you don't want to get a tattoo, you can get a haircut from expert barbers from Ben's Biz, and they're going to be doing haircuts, beard trims, and apparently there's an option to shave Gears of War shit into the side of your head. Yeah, right. I thought you were going to hmm. go... If you don't want to get a tattoo, you can get a tat three. And there's also hair pieces there. They're free. You don't have to pay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, dad joke. That's well done. <laughs> <laughs> I got, you gotcha. You, you got gotcha. Me. You got me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, try, I tried to run with it and I'm like, yeah, well done. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> you laughed. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> For anyone to go, uh, pretty much if you look for microsoftevents.com, uh, you can get some information up in there. And I'm also in the process of putting it up on the website, unless you have already, Luke. No? no. All right. Well, I'm in the process of putting it up. So <laughs> it'll be on the website, ajxp.com. Sorry, theajxp.com. And uh, you can go on there and register for it and hopefully – you know, you'll still have to get down there and there's only a limited amount of people that can be registered. And, yeah, I'll be honest, I have registered. My name is on there. Uh, Greggio, the uh, the new bits and pieces for the Game Pass, mate. It was actually, I think it came out of the Inside Xbox at Gamescon this week. They, um, they mentioned that they've got uh, a few new games coming this week and I've already checked Two of the three are already available. Uh, so we have Age of Empires Definitive Edition is coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, Devil May Cry 5 is available right now. And Stellaris, which I've downloaded and will play this week because it looks really interesting. And of the three, it's the one that I had no idea about, so I thought I'd give it a go. But it's like a space strategy game. Kind of think like Eve meets... Age of Empires. All right, sounds good. Yeah. Hello, Age of Empires. I'm Eve. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yes. I will. <laughs> Lucas. What? These renders for the PS5. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. this took a little bit of an interesting turn. All right, so mm-hmm. there's, there's, there's been uh, some leaks on what the PlayStation 5 has been rumoured to be. If you haven't seen it, kind of looks like a toilet seat, which is the joke we made at the start of the show. Uh, <clears throat> however, uh, the what's his name? Uh, where is it here? Matthew Stott is his name. He's come out and tweeted, "It's a dev kit. We have some of those in the office. Sony Payton shows PlayStation Five dev kit, dev kit, or even maybe the console itself." So he's uh, retweeted and said, yeah, that's a dev kit. We've got a couple of those. So he's which has since been deleted. Well, getting to that, which is is <laughs> Sorry. very, very likely <laughs> strongly against a very strict NDA, which is a non-disclosure agreement between anyone that has one of these dev kits and, and Sony. And the, that Twitter account has since been De- deactivated, deleted. So I would imagine there's probably a little bit of weight behind this now, the fact that he's disappeared, unless it's an elaborate hoax, because uh, I don't know who the bloke is, but um, he, he may be uh, uh, some sort of developer or involved in some sort of development of PlayStation 5 games. And, uh, yeah, that that uh, account is now gone. If you search for it, the account is Matthew.Stot, S-T-O-O-T, uh, sorry, no, that's his name. It's at Matt, M-A-T-T, underscore, Stott, underscore, 72. That's his Twitter account, but it's now dead. It just says this account no longer exists. So yes. uh, there, there there might be a little bit of um, truth to that. Look, I, I tend to believe it. Uh, it seems to to be. And, yeah, some, some you know, creative people on the internet has taken the, the schematics or the little outline drawings and turned them into full 3D renders. And uh, it looks pretty cool as a render and all that, but it, there's a little bit of creative license going into it because yep. the 
the, the pictures that were leaked don't exactly have that much detail. We don't know what all the buttons are. We don't know what that slot is on the front. We presume it's a disc slot, you know, and there's just sort of circles above it, which they've sort of superimposed as play, pause, fast forward, you know, buttons and eject. Whereas I very much doubt that there would be those kind of buttons on there. But anyway, the, the, the design is quite bizarre and I would pretty much never have believed that it would be a consumer console. But a dev kit, I would kind of understand because it does look strange, but I would underst- I would probably think that those massive big vents are probably for cooling. And the biggest thing with the Xbox One X dev kit, because they came out and announced it and showed it, showed us what it was, is that they were stackable. So with the, the this, if this is the PS5 dev kit, that massive cutout, the V-shaped cutout in the middle that kind of makes it look like a bit of a toilet seat would probably allow these things to be stackable because there's a massive air void for airflow and fans. So Not only that, if you have a look at the the top of the the render and and the the leaked images as well, there's actually uh, places for the feet on the on the bottom yeah. to sit on the top. Yes, so yes there is very, like little markers, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, so it's it's very much something that would be stackable. And yeah. I, I'm going to throw my two bits in. I would buy it. Oh, it's not it's not the worst thing in the world, no. I, I sort of look at this and go, you know what, if that's with, with even the renders that they've put out with the blue lights in it, I would buy one, 100%. I think it's something that, you know, for for too long, or even sort of the the PS3 when it came out, you know, it was it was the cheapest way to buy a Blu-ray player, and it was designed to be something that was was in the you know in the lounge room in the main family room of the house. This one could be just that that next step to get it to be you know a full on gaming console. Can I can I yeah. can I back this up one step? Sure. If it did everything that it promised it did. To be the PS5, the the newest, the latest, the greatest in gaming consoles. Even if it was dressed up like a poo emoji, you would still buy one. For, Gridge, no, seriously, stop the tape, stop the tape. Seriously, you have dead set read my mind. You even used the same. Because <laughs> while Snoogs was talking, I was thinking of when there yeah. was a chance I was going to say. But seriously, yeah. if this thing was shaped like a poo, I would yep. buy it anyway because it doesn't yep. matter what it looks like in the end. You've just – that was a little bit freaky what you said because yeah. that's Sorry. what I yeah. was thinking. Very we're, good. We're just, Great minds we're just, think alike. Yeah, we're on that wavelength. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so I'm what just going to say – if it looked like a turd, you'd still buy I'll it. Get it. it doesn't matter. Right. Oh. <laughs> no, I just, I just, I like it. Like, even if it was an Xbox and it looked like that, it's. I, I just think it's, it's, it's something that's bold. It's something that's different. And if you have a look at the way that, you know, the big things at the moment in, in PCs and those big gaming rigs are colours and water cooling. Yeah, we don't need water anyway. We've been down that road, but. It's stuff that stands out, and I think this would stand out, not just a little black box that, you know, sits in under the TV that just sits there and collects dust. This is something that's – it just – it looks cool, in my opinion. Yeah, the, the problem is that that's too expensive. They, they will make it simpler. But like, yeah, that's yeah. a dev kit, so they'll go above and beyond to keep them uh, cool and, and running properly. Uh, the, the, the consumer stuff, it'll be very simple again. I, it's, that's it's, what I reckon. It's like all things. The prototypes look amazing, but they always like dull them down and make yeah, them more palatable, uh, essentially, so the the masses buy them. It's exactly, like the same with yeah. cars. You go to the motor show and you look at all the prototype cars, and then you look at them ten years later when they finally release them as a actual car, and you're like, "That looks nothing like what you originally." You lied to me. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. So the same but thing. But it also, it's also smart marketing too because if you do oh, something yeah. on the console that uh, looks a little bit bizarre, that could be a lost sale. Hmm. You know, like hmm. the, the people like us, it doesn't matter. You know, we're going to yeah. buy it anyway. 
But the thing is, you've got to make, like, like Greg said, you've got to make it palatable to the masses. Hmm. So that way you're not losing sales based on where you put an LED right. light. 100%. So, yeah, so it's got to look like everything else in the, the, the shelves. Yeah. Exactly. So. so it won't look anything like that. But, yeah, it's interesting that that thing does exist and hmm. some people are getting in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I don't know. Why, why is it such a secret what it looks yeah. like, though? <sighs> Probably because they haven't really talked about it much. Yeah, but what, I think, what I think one of the things, of too, the... well, I think, too, because it's, you know, this has got Yoshihiro's name on it. Um, it's a design pattern that's been leaked and just all the information that goes with it. So the the big thing, too, for anyone who hasn't seen it, there is actually a post up on the website, uh, which, once again, is thexp.com. And there's some information on it and all the pictures and whatnots. Yeah, look, it's still early on in the development cycle for this thing. And anything that gives away how they might have laid out the thing or anything like that, that maybe their competitors are struggling with, this this would be a an annoying thing for them. So any either advantage. They to themselves. Yeah, either that or leak themselves, and this is all just publicity to say, hey, look at us. Good on them. It is coming. <laughs> it is coming. It is coming. Uh, Gredge, Minecraft Earth. We spoke about this a few weeks ago. Uh, it's the mobile game from Minecraft. Uh, it was. It had a, um, a beta for um, iOS. Well, apparently... Everyone on Android that wants to play it has gone, oi, what about us? So next week, starting next week, there will be a beta for Android. You can sign up by going to minecraft.net and signing up there. Now, I've, I've, had, a, I've, I've, I've had a bit more of a look of it since, uh, since we last spoke about it. It looks really cool. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so it is a bit like... Uh, um, all the other sort of Pokemon go kind of things. So the idea is you walk along uh, and just like Pokemon Go, you find little spots and to collect materials and pieces, right? And then you can then go and open up your creative uh, sort of placemat, if you will. Mm-hmm. And you can lay it down in sort of an augmented reality way you can put it on like a table or the floor or you can even like on ground anywhere and then you can start playing uh within you know uh sort of designing you can change different views you can zoom in you can have like a first person view where like you're inside your structure and you can build and and do whatever you can you can have other people walking around inside your building and whatnot or you can zoom out and it works sort of like if you're playing with Lego, there's a mat and then you build and you can just sort of look at it and walk around it and sort of look and it, it, it looks really cool. It looks like a lot of fun. I, once it actually rolls out, I think I might even have a crack at it because it just, just, it just looks, it's just an interesting concept. It absolutely looks like at least minutes of, Hilarity and amazing fun. <laughs> yeah. And that's, I, look, I'm not being spiteful. I think it does look good, but I'm just talking about battery time. You're not going to get much of that. Oh, yeah, no, no. This, you know, you'll have to have it like plugged in and you, <laughs> you when you're building, you'll have to be in your living room plugged into the PowerPoint building yeah. away. Yeah. But no, uh, no, seeing right. two people play at once um, together on two different phones and working together to build on the same thing. It, it, it's really cool. All right, guys, do you remember that little game called Anthem? Uh, yeah. No, no, yeah, I've forgotten. Cute, cute little guy. <laughs> <laughs> cute little guy. So much promise. So, so much promise and then... Not a lot of delivery. Yeah. There, then it kind of just, just went away. So uh, the fine people at JB Hi-Fi have, uh, have written a review. Well, kind of a review anyway. Anthem is now on sale at JB Hi-Fi for $15. And as a lot of people have seen, you know, there's some talented people that work for JB. Someone has put a picture next to the $15 price tag of The Undertaker. And 
I'm I'm assuming this is one of his li- one of his lines. You cannot kill that which is already dead. Are you talking the Undertaker as in the wrestling? <laughs> wrestling, yes. Sorry. Right. So I, uh, I, I think it was apt either way, but <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so for anyone that hasn't seen it, uh, the picture is going up in our random folder over on our Discord channel. So make sure you jump in there and have a squiz because it's uh, it's quite amusing. <laughs> the Undertaker looks like he's 65. <laughs> <laughs> I think he is now, isn't he? <laughs> he probably is, yeah. <laughs> he yeah, can't yeah. kill that bitch is already dead. Oh, poor Anthem. Yeah, it keeps getting a boot. But these things happen. Uh, Lucas. Now what? Ah, oh, sorry, yes. the Uncharted movie. What? Why? 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 Right, Why? allow me to get my notes here. Oh, Uncharted God. movie loses you, another director. You 3D printed those notes, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, this is a 2D printer. I've had that one for oh, okay. a while. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we constantly were like, oh, there's an Uncharted movie coming. Oh, they've got a new director. Oh, well, well, it's happened again. So let me read this. This is from, I don't know, is this Kotaku? I don't know. I printed it. I can't read. I, I cut off a bit where it was from, sorry. But it was Matthew Cato who's written this. It says, Dan Trachtenberg of 10 Cloverfield Lane is the latest director to leave the Uncharted film. It's like, it's, it's gonna, the, the amount of directors that have left are going to be longer than the actual cast list. Uh, that if it ever actually eventuates. <laughs> According to Deadline, Sony's new PlayStation Productions is taking over the film, which will be its first. Oh, that's going to be fantastic, isn't it, now? And hopes to fill the now vacant director's chair by the end of the summer. Current Spider-Man Tom Holland is still attached to star as Nathan Drake in the movie, which starts production early next year. This is going to be a train wreck. I hope you don't want me to repeat any of that because I just scrunched it up. Yeah, that's what no, I gathered that. No, the um, the train wreck kind of sums it up. Mm. I've got, it's got, it's got no so high hopes. This is, this is like going to be the second Angelina Jolie Tomb Raider film all over again. But what are just they going to tell? Shit. What are they going to? What are they going to tell that the games haven't already told? We know. What happens? Hmm. Yeah. I just, oh, look, I don't know. I just, I think it's just, it needs to be canned. Don't worry about it. Just leave it. Move on with your lives. Go and make another Fast and the Furious movie or something. <laughs> Let's spider him and Venom trying to finally get attack each other. Yeah, well, no, I don't look, that, that can't happen actually because uh, Sony have pulled the reins again. So uh, actually, it would have to be Venom and, well, hang on. How, how does that work? Now, they own both of them. They could make a Spider-Man and yeah. Venom movie, couldn't they? Yeah, no, I, yeah, thought because, it, I thought it was Disney because, that was getting involved in this bullshit. Oh, no, yeah. Because so Disney, Disney, Disney or the Marvel sort of thing, because that fell through, Spider-Man can now be in a movie with Venom. And yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, the yeah. Main reasons that it fell through. Yeah, probably, because they wanted to make that. But anyway, I just think yeah. Sony should just stick to video games because that's where they seem to do well. I heard a thing somewhere that that's, that's the only part of Sony that actually makes money and keeps them float is PlayStation. So, yeah, I don't know. Just, just leave the movies alone. All right, well, how about a bit of a feel-good story then? Okay. All right. Uh, someone by the name of Mitchell Riley. Ah, oh, good bloke. 17 years ago, sent a handwritten note to Seamus Blackley. Probably Seamus, but yeah. Seamus. Well, why is your name Seamus? Because that's how you spell Seamus. <laughs> Are you part Irish? I was yeah. going to say, your brother's it's name Seamus. is Sean. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yes. Um, well, that's. I was looking at it going, Sean, Seam, well, whatever. Um <laughs> Oh God, I don't know what planet I'm on right now because looking at it the second time, yeah, that's a Seamus. Um, uh, editing Lucas. 
Save me. We we all know editing Lucas is chuckling on and leaving that right where it is. Yep. <laughs> I've got uh, it on good authority. He's not touching it. <laughs> <laughs> well, my apologies, Seamus. Uh, apparently in his uh, his Twitter, uh, people say that he's the father of Xbox. I don't know. <laughs> Illegitimate father. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he just says that he didn't have to put it through college, so that's fine. Anyway, <laughs> Mitchell Riley, 17 years ago, sent this little handwritten note with a couple of pictures uh, for Microsoft. Dear Xbox team, I really like your Xbox so much that my friends really like to play at my house. The most games they like is Halo Combat Evolve. I also like Halo 2. I got a question how you could do capture the flag in Halo in a TV, okay? Uh, he's, he's still sitting there wondering how to do that. Ooh, he got <laughs> yeah. really good. P.S. P- make Halo 2 and make it great just like the other one. Sincerely, Mitchell. Now, well, they clearly read it. Because they did. They made Halo 2. Sorry. <laughs> and it was great. Judging by the, the letter itself, uh, Mitchell was very young. Uh, when he wrote this, like oh, I'm thinking, maybe you know, it's the same sort of level as as my daughter, so you know, six or seven, possibly, uh, quite young. And this was obviously sent off to uh, Xbox. Seamus has found it going through an old box and realised that he hadn't replied. Sons of bitches! I know, right? Uh, anyway, the joys of the Twitterverse. He has been found. So Mitchell Riley has been found. And they got a photo with him uh, with Steve Downs and Cortano, who is Gente Lawton. I think that's the name. Right. Uh, yeah, so they, they've found him after all this time. Uh, there's there's one one thing, though. So uh, young, <laughs> apparently young Mitchell didn't have a Twitter account. He has made himself a Twitter account to respond back to Seamus and get in touch after obviously friends and, and whatnot have found out who he is and, and all that. So now that he's got himself a Twitter account, we're sorry, Mitchell, it's all downhill from here. <laughs> it's, you've now entered a world of hate and anger. Yeah. <laughs> now and it's it's just everything's going to go down. But I thought that was a, a pretty cool little story when I saw this pop up that, uh, yeah, after 17 years, this guy found this little bit of paper that was in a box from... Uh, from days at, at Microsoft and then was able to reach out and through the power of the internet, this guy was found. I just think that's a pretty cool little story to finish up my sort of bits and pieces from. That is pretty pretty cool. But, mate, I'm still sitting here bitter that I never heard back from Agro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I sent a letter, in, letter into Agro and it was a handwritten thing because back in the yeah. day there was no such thing as email. I hand wrote a letter to Agro, and I haven't heard anything back yet. I wanted my prize pack. That's because Agro was too busy with his hand up, Anne Marita, right? Oh yeah, but uh, I, a, a prize, but was a GAC prize pack that I was oh, yeah. waiting on, and it was the glow in the dark stuff. Do you remember GAC? Yeah, I remember. Look, I remember my GAC. son just got GAC for his birthday. Still That's around. Good parenting. Good parenting. <laughs> I didn't get it for him. <laughs> it's bad parenting because you, oh. parent, you don't want that stuff all over the house. And now I now yeah. know why my parents were so anal retentive about my gag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, screw yeah, you, Agro. I, I, I don't think Agro is going to find it. Um, yeah. So D- Seriously, I, how, long, how long do we have to wait before, like, he turns into the, the father from Hey Dad? Come on, that's coming, surely. Oh, totally. <laughs> totally. It, I'm, waiting for, I'm waiting for it. Agro's he's, me too. Yeah, yeah. He's he's sitting there and he's got beads of sweat pouring down after watching <laughs> watching Hey Dad go down. <laughs> yep. Agro is sweating bullets right now. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't I don't think uh Agro would have been on the same level. At least Anne Marie was an adult. No, <laughs> Agro wasn't on the same level, it was already under the table. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for our international listeners, Agro was from Agro's Cartoon Connection. It was a uh, was it on every day? Yeah, yeah, it was like a. Daytime. It was a thing in the morning. The morning and, oh, kids show and 
they showed cartoons and uh, Agro was a, a puppet. It was a dude underneath a desk. So, yeah, just, and just in case you were like, who the hell is Agro? touched the female host. Yeah, which you, you never saw, but uh, you always got the host, the female host's reaction when she would go, oh, and she'd be like, as a kid, that goes over your head, and then you grow up older, yes. and you're like, oh, yeah, it's his hands. Oh, 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 Agro, stop tickling him, Marie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And and now you go onto YouTube and search for you know the adults only version of Agro, <laughs> and um, you realise yeah. how bad it could look nowadays. Yeah, yeah. and then you wait for the sixty minutes expose. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring a Tracy. There you go for it, love. Um, <laughs> oh God, <laughs> Greggio. Wrap us up with uh, what's coming out this week, mate. Will do. So uh, while I was looking for window shopping, I saw three sort of big ticket items that are coming out this week, so I thought I'd let you guys know. Uh, Wreckfest comes out tomorrow, which mm-hmm. is a uh, demonstration derby racing game. We it's been out have... for years already on PC. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Apparently you can have multi-vehicle racing, so like cars can be up against trucks and shit. Yeah, I saw a video of a dude racing a ride-on lawnmower versus buses. Yeah, it didn't go well. No, it um, didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> but, hey, what are you going to do? Uh, it, no, it looks really good from what I've seen. Uh, it's um, kind of a spiritual successor to um, – what was that one that came out a little while ago? No, it's gone. doesn't matter. Retro um, on PC? No, 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 no. no, no but no, beat, beat. Beam NG was its uh, original, like where it came from. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's the people that have made it have have a history of making car games where you know they smash into each other and stuff like that. So it's, demolition it's got, derby. Uh, there was one in between <laughs> demolition derby and now. It doesn't matter. Look, I've forgotten. I'll, I'll remember and I'll, I'll I'll bring it up next week. Anyway, uh, also. Um, do you remember E3? There was that horror game that was uh, teased called The Dark Pictures Man of Medan. I do, you do, and I've seen lots about it. Yeah, I remember so, the name. So that comes out this week too on the 30th. Yeah. Okay. So that's on everything PC, Xbox, uh, PlayStation. Uh, and uh, Blair Witch comes out this week as well. So Yeah, that's Xbox what I'm interested PC. for. So, yeah. Cool. So, those I are the big not, ticket items for this week. I did not realise they come out this week. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, oh, good. Well, uh, I think that's it for news, boys. Yes. Very good. Let's jump into some last words. I always forget to ask. Any shout outs this week? Uh, no, I don't have any. Ah! Righto. Someone just 3D printed their hand. Okay. Uh, that was that was my shout out. <laughs> that was your shout out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I fucking cracked myself up. Yeah, at least one of us does. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm oh. going to shout out to Kaza. So he's been listening along. I'm guessing he's working this evening. He and, hasn't listened to all the word we've said. He just asked me about my 3D printer. No, he's asked how your 3D printed house and car is looking. <laughs> Oh, I read half the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his three D his three D printed glasses are coming along just fine. <laughs> there you go, three D print glasses. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thanks, Kaz, for listening along. Uh, that's it. Give us a plug for that other show. Oh yeah, uh, it's a show I do on. YouTube. It's called That Other Show. It's on iTunes as well. Go and listen to it. There's, there's some good stories I tell in the sh- in the episodes, and uh, and I make it, and um, that's enough reason to go and check it out. Oh, and uh, I, was, mm-hmm. I, I do have a I do have a quick shout out, and it's for Kaza yeah. Kyle as well. Just good. quickly, my little girl jumped into our realm on the on uh, Minecraft. And uh, she got into like the little text chat and was chatting with Kaza. And I just got to say, absolute gentleman helping out my little girl playing because she didn't have any food. So he gave her some food and he gave her some weapons and helped her out. And Kaza's just typed in the chat, she can build better than me. Yes, she can actually. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so that's her house just in front of yours, isn't it? Uh, I think so. Yeah, she's built it yeah. behind. 
Yeah, it's a lot she better than out, mine. She built it out of the forest that was growing next to my house. <laughs> 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 I oh, went in there well. the other night and I went, oh, that looks fantastic. Where have all the trees gone? <laughs> Where's my backyard? <laughs> it's just it like real great. life. It's in a biome green that belt. is very rare on trees. That's kind of <laughs> annoying, but funny at the same time. No, very good. <laughs> it, was, it was great, yeah. yeah uh, she, th- thanks, and, thanks yeah, Kazo. Yeah. You, the, you're a legend for helping her out. And, you know, actually she said to me after she got off, she said, I like him. He's nice. Oh, that's nice. That's cool. Aww. Someone, Aww. someone likes you. <laughs> She's also named her horse. Awesome. <laughs> I didn't even know there were horses in there. <laughs> I, I think I think I should also shout out to Kaza since I'm the only one that hasn't done it now in the last five minutes. But I'm going to give him a shout out because he actually remembered the name of the game I was trying to think of, which was Flat Out. There you go. I said Work. that. Did you? You said yeah. Burnout. No, I didn't say burnout. Yeah, I didn't say flat out either. I was going to edit it in later. But I was going to say you you said you said demolition derby to begin, and I said no, there was yeah. one between that. And then someone said burnout, and I was like, no, it's not that either. And I was, was going to sneakily out. edit it in later, but I can't be <laughs> stuffed, so I'll just come clean. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> nice try. Oi, host, this is your turn. Yeah. I, I completely dropped out then. I could see the lights flash and I was waiting for you to come back. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't gone anywhere. It's you that needed to come back. I know. It's, it's me. I'm on uh, – It's. I, I'm, I feel like I'm very far out of the city tonight. You need to pay your bloody bills is what you need to do. <laughs> my, my internet's running, like, stupidly quick. I don't know what it is. It's just – It's not running out. anywhere. It's walking oh, it's, really slow. It's, Slowly, no, I don't know. Like my um, my Discord thing's been sitting between yellow and red most of the night. So, so is mine yeah. actually. Yeah, so I don't know what's been playing up there. Uh, all right, guys. Well, some other plugs: Snooker Vision over on Twitch, Aussie Gamers TV on Twitch, or what? What, what did we work out? It was Ajax the AJXP. AJXP. The AJXP, AJXP on Mixer, and of course Greggio XBL over on Instagram. Make sure you give us a. Like, follow, or whatever the heck it is. Good stuff. Shall we close it up, boys? Let's do it. Shut it. Do it. Thank you very much for everyone that's listening to the show, and especially those that are still listening this far along. A super special thanks again to Kaz for listening in and everyone else who usually joins us, but they've decided to snob us this evening. Oh, sad. Yes, I'm talking to you guys. You know who you are. Greggio, Lucas, thank you for joining me, boys. No. Always oh, pleasure. no worries, man. No worries. And Lucas, have fun with the editing, as I'm sure you always do. To all of our listeners, feel free to continue any of the topics that we've discussed on this show over on our well, Facebook page, if you like. But to be honest, we're not there all that much anymore because Facebook is dying. Uh, come and join us in our Discord channel. To get in touch with us directly, you can shoot us an email at info at the com. And while you're at it, don't forget to jump on over to www.thxp.com and check out a whole lot of features that we've got over there. Links, as always, are in the podcast show notes and description. That's all from me. As always, I'm Snooks. I'm Lucas. And I have been Gregio. See you next time. Bye. Righto. That's the end of the show. Does anybody listen to the show this far along? I don't know. But if you do, join our exclusive Discord club known as the Agents of Age. Just join our Discord channel using the link in the show description and comment the phrase, I came here to party, and you will gain Agent of Age status. Subscribe to this podcast using the links to the things in the show description notes. And if you are listening, know this, we love you. See you next time on the official podcast of the Aussie Gamers Experience.